Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, this video kind of sucks. So today I'm going to talk about a couple of common diseases in turtles and tortoises that have afflicted my turtles personally. I have had a hell of a couple of weeks. So I'll start it a couple months ago when in my hatchlings I have four, two concentric and two ornate diamondback terrapins together in a 29 gallon tub. One day I noticed that Nilla, my large white ornate diamondback terrapin had this stringy substance coming from his butt pretty much his cloaca and it looked segmented there were little segments which means that that's not just some type of excrement it's not anything from and not anything really like natural like that is a worm that's a tapeworm now because there was the worm in just the one there was three other turtles in with Nilla I have to assume all other turtles are contaminated now there are two questions when you realize that your turtles have got worms where did they come from? Where did they go? Where did they come from? It's been, a, it's been a rough day. I'll get to that in a minute. Where did it come from and how do I treat it? Tapeworms often come from fish. If you're feeding your turtles human grade fish, they're not going to have them. But one of my buddies said that his got tapeworms from feeding bait fish. I asked if guppies potentially could harbor these tapeworms. They said likely not. So I think that Coco and Nilla, when they spent their little time in the wild, got these worms just naturally eating some type of fish carcass or something in the wild. So how am I going to fix this? I am working with a vet right now. I have them on dewormers and what I'm going to do is take their entire enclosure, rinse it out, scrub it really well, wash it with Dawn dish soap, let everything dry and bake in the sun for a day and put everything back. I'm going to dose two times uh, over the course of two weeks just to make sure that all those worms are gone. So now as I'm working on the pond last Tuesday, I noticed that one of my male consent Centric diamondback terrapins was acting a little funny. He was basking more than normal and then he was breathing from his mouth a little bit and then the real kicker was there was mucus coming from his nose. Those are all solid signs of a respiratory infection, an upper respiratory infection. It's basically like having a cold or pneumonia or something like that. So I took him to the vet and my suspicions were confirmed. This audio might be really windy. I might have to refilm this whole thing. So now I'm indoors, we can see my turtle setups here. We got Jelly the Spotted Turtle back here, Otis the Chinese Fox Turtle here, the four terrapins in here with no heat lamp because I'm trying out something new where they theorize that hatchlings don't actually need heat lamps or UVD and it actually might be hindering their growth rather than helping. And then my male concentric diamondback terrapin right here who has the respiratory infection. He's in his little quarantine tub. So the main driving cause of getting respiratory infections is usually attributed to cold air. Now him being outside during brumation, something just probably went wrong. You know, his, his immune system was a little bit too low. And I mean, it's cold air out. That's sort of one of the risks when brumating your animals. So we go to the vet, he gets his injections there. Right here, I have about six of them left to give every other day. Uh, I just give them right in his armpit. If I am a turtle, these are my arms. He should go right in here, just right underneath the skin and give a little injection. And in a couple of weeks, he should be right back to his normal self. And by that point, I can put him out in the pond. He's already looking a lot better. He's actually, his appetite has increased substantially and he's really looking pretty good. You can see him right down here in the corner. If you don't take your turtle to the vet, get them on antibiotics. I have never heard of a turtle just naturally recover from a respiratory infection. They need antibiotics, otherwise they will succumb to the illness, they'll die. Your turtle will die. Go to the vet. So I come back from bringing him, you know, from the vet, and uh, I go and I put him in his little tub here, and I let him settle in. And I go and I look at Bean in the 110 gallon stock tank. While I'm building the pond, I have them in a stock tank with a net over top so they can get natural sunlight. It's Bean, Flipper, and Pancake in there. This boy was in there, but now, you know, he's sick. And she's swimming but her arm is limp. Uh, so she's swimming, but her she's not using her left arm at all. What is, what is she doing there? So I took a look at it and nothing really looked to be wrong. However, in that 110 gallon enclosure, there is a big piece of driftwood that I have and then a five gallon bucket as the filter. I theorized that she fell and caught her arm between the five gallon bucket and the driftwood and pinched it and then sprained it. Now this is really like a freak accident, just like in people, you know, you fall wrong. It just, it happens. You can take as good a care as possible of your turtles and this kind of stuff, it'll just happen. Same with the respiratory infection. They can just kind of get it. So I look at Bean and I assume that she just has a sprained arm or something. So I put her in a 75 gallon tub all on her own so she can rest it and let it heal up. 
But then now a week later, it's not looking too much better. And my buddy tells me she could have an infection in the bone. What? Bone, infected bones doesn't sound good to me. So my butt goes to the vet like immediately. I skip class to go to the vet. The vet tells me we need to do an x-ray. And I'm like, oh boy, my wallet says no, but I say yes. So we get the x-ray done. She goes to see if there's any infection in the bones. Nothing, no fractures, no nothing. She has quote. The bone looks beautiful and clean. Bean is totally fine. She literally just bruised her arm. I'm relieved. I got her some painkillers regardless, just so that way she can maybe start using it a little bit or she can be more comfortable and relaxed. But then I look in the 110 gallon stock tank. At this point, there's only flipper and pancake. What could go wrong? I don't see pancake. And there's no way that he escaped because there's no way out. I mean, the tub is way too low. So where is he? He's either hiding and injured or he's stuck. So I go through and I feel my hand all around. And right when I get towards the pump, he comes floating to the surface, limp. I pick him up and I pull him out and I could tell because his nails are cut and his arm has one little laceration. His arm got stuck in the pump somehow and it held him underwater and he partially drowned. This is kind of fairly common in turtles. It's why I say, especially when you have hatchlings, put fake plants in there to let them rest and get to the surface because things like this can happen. It just so happens that three freak accidents happened within a week and a half of each other and it is really taking its toll on me. See his mouth opening like that? I feel as though he wants to cough up. Come on, buddy. There we go. There's a little foam in his mouth. So that was just earlier today. And so I had him upside down doing first aid on him, pumping his arms in and out because that pumps the water out, gets his lungs moving. And he coughed up some water. I dry docked him for about three hours to make sure that he was okay. And by the end of it, he was moving around. He was acting like his normal self. I pick him up and he's starting to try to bite me. And he's got his little spunk back. I put him in the 75 gallon tub with bean. He immediately tries to mate with her. That tells me that Pancake's doing okay now. I feel very fortunate, very blessed in this scenario, but man, what is going on? That's three turtles in a week that have all fallen ill to something different. I mean, I don't know, it's ridiculous. So Bean, it turned out, was totally fine. I have her in a separate little quarantine tub so she can heal her little arm. That is just a freak accident that I've actually never even heard of before. I've never even seen it on forums. Turtles spraining their arm. I mean, I've had map turtles dive head first into concrete blocks just for shits and giggles. They just slam off of it for no reason and they're totally fine. Bean, poor baby, flips upside down and manages to twist her arm up. I mean, that's just what I assume happened. And then I get home and Pancake's been drowned for 45 minutes. Oh my God, I understand that this is part of being a turtle owner and this is part of the whole thing, but my God, all of this in one week. Anyway. That's where I've been, and I've been digging the pond. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see my future videos, and hit the bell notification thingy so you get notified when I make a new video. I can speak, I swear. Vet bills are very expensive, so please head to my Patreon and support me over there. You will get behind the scenes access to stuff, direct input on uh, my videos and whatnot. You can DM me on Instagram and I'll answer you immediately. Also, if you donate to my Patreon any amount, you get to see the full pond build video before anyone else does. I'm not even putting it on Instagram. I'm not putting it on Snapchat. It is nowhere. Also on the Patreon, you get unlimited access to my personal Snapchat where I get to put all my turtley fun stuff. So if you guys think that that would interest you, you want to spend your stimulus check on me, go ahead and click the link in the description. That's going to be it for this video. This was a very, very mentally taxing week. I have finals coming up. I don't know how I'm going to survive. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go cry at my computer screen and I will see you all in the next one. What? is this. Does anybody have scissors, please?